Today's lesson is about tabs. Tabs mark the place where the insertion point stops whenever you press the tab key. If you look on your, tab, on your keyboard, the tab key is above the caps lock key. And every time you press it, it moves over a half of an inch, or approximately five spaces. You use the tab key to indent paragraphs whenever you're typing an essay or a report. But sometimes you may want to have a tab that goes over further than a half of an inch, or maybe not as far as a half an inch, like maybe a quarter of an inch. Well, if you need to set custom tabs, it's really simple to do, and there's two ways to do it. One way is by using your ruler. Now, if your ruler is not on, there are a couple of ways you can turn it on. There is a small button right above your scroll bar, your vertical scroll bar on the right side of your screen. When you point to it, it says View Ruler. This button will turn on and off your ruler. Another way to turn on your ruler is to go to your View tab, and in the Show Hide group, there's a checkbox for ruler. If the box is checked, that means your ruler is currently turned on. If it's not checked, then it's off so you would check it to turn it on. Alright, once you have your ruler on, the next step is to go over here to your tab alignment box. Your tab alignment box contains different types of tabs as well as indents. We're only concerned with four of the five tabs that you can set. The left tab just aligns text uh, at, at its left. If you click on this box right here, you get an upside down T, which is the center tab, which will center text around the point on the ruler where you set the tab. The next tab alignment is the right tab. Notice that the right tab is a backwards L. The left tab was an L symbol. Left and right are opposites, so their tab symbols are also opposites. One looks like an L, that's the left tab, and the right tab is a backwards L. If you click just one more time, you get a symbol that looks very similar to the center tab symbol. This one's an upside down T that has a dot over it. This is your decimal tab and your decimal tab will just line up numbers that have decimal points by their decimal point. If you continue clicking, you'll see a bar tab, which will put a line between each one of your columns. Then you have some indent buttons. We're going to skip those for now. Alright, to set a tab, once you have chosen the type of alignment that you want, you just click on the ruler wherever you want that left tab to go. So we're going to click at the one inch mark and now you see that you have that same L symbol on the ruler. So now watch what happens when I press the tab key. It skips that half inch mark and goes directly to the one inch tab. So whenever you set a tab, a custom tab, it disregards the default tabs, which are every half inch. Alright, now if you wanted to set a center tab, you would just click again and get the upside down T symbol, and you could click anywhere on the ruler wherever you want the center tab to go. Now, if I press the tab key again, it jumps directly over to the four inch mark, because that's where I set my next custom tab. If you want to clear a tab that you have set, an easy way to do that is to move your mouse over that tab symbol that's on your ruler, and you have to be very precise with this because what you're going to do is you're going to click on that tab symbol and drag it down into your document, and then it makes it disappear. But the reason I say you have to be really careful and really precise is because if you think you're clicking on the tab symbol and you accidentally click over to the side of it, you're going to set another tab and you don't want to do that. But again, to clear a tab, it's very simple. You just click on it, drag it into the document.
There's another way to set tabs as well. The other way is to go to your home ribbon and to the paragraph group. And you have this very small box that has an arrow on it. And this is called your dialog box launcher button. And this will actually launch your paragraph dialog box. At the bottom of the box, below the preview, you have a button called tabs. And if we click this button, you'll see you get the tabs dialog box. Here you can type in the location that you want for your tab and the alignment that you want for your tab. You have five choices, but we're only focusing on the left, center, right, and decimal tabs. You also have a section for leaders that will be covered in another lesson, so don't worry about that right now. All right, so let's say that I have a tab that I want at the one inch mark, so I would type in the number one in the tab stop position box, and then I would choose my type of alignment. If I wanted a center tab, I would choose center, and then I would click set. Clicking set is very important to do before you click OK. Okay, let's say that we also want a tab set at the three inch mark and we want it to be a center, uh, a left tab. Alright, so I would type in the number three in the tab stop position box. I would choose left and then I would click set. So you can create as many tabs as you want to in the tabs dialog box and then always make sure that you choose set. Don't ever mess with the default tab stops. It should always be set at a half of an inch because normally if you're typing a paper, an essay, a report, something like that, that has several paragraphs, you just want to hit the tab key to get your paragraph indented. So don't ever mess with this because you always want your paragraphs to be indented at a half of an inch unless your teacher otherwise gives you other directions. Alright, now I'm going to click OK because I have the two tabs that I want. And you'll see that now you have tabs set at both the one inch mark and the three inch mark. This one's your center tab, and this one's your left tab, and I know that because of the symbols. Okay, so let me backspace this. It, to get over to my one inch mark, I would just press the tab key, and then I start typing. And notice how my text is centered around this center tab at the one inch mark. Now to get over to the three inch mark, I have to press tab again. And this time I'll type in computer applications and I want you to notice that your three inch tab is a left tab so the text computer applications is lined up at the three inch mark with the left tab. Alright and another way I want to show you that you can clear a tab okay we've we've looked at two ways that you can set tabs you can set tabs by first clicking on your tab alignment box to choose the type of tab that you want to create then you click on the ruler or you can go to the tabs dialog box and you can set tabs here but don't forget to choose the type of alignment you want for each tab and then choose set all right we also looked at one way to clear tabs one way to clear a tab is just by clicking on it dragging it into the document and then when you release your mouse button it clears that tab and you'll notice that my name jumped over to the three inch mark because I had pressed tab and so this is the only tab that existed. Alright another way to clear a tab is by going to the tabs dialog box and choosing clear or clear all. I'm going to click undo to bring back my other tab so I can show you. 
Now we sh I showed you how to get into the tabs dialog box. You just click on the dialog box launcher button and go to tabs. But an even quicker way to get to the tabs dialog box is if you have an existing tab already set on the ruler, you can double click on that tab and it will open up the tabs dialog box. But one thing you need to remember is just like with clearing the tab, you have to make sure that you are precisely over that tab before you double click. If you're not and you accidentally double click beside it, well look, you've set another tab and you don't want to do that. So you've got to be careful. Alright, so if you want to clear just one tab, you would click on it in this particular tab stop position box in the list and then you would choose clear. But if you wanted to clear every tab that you had created, you would choose clear all and then OK. And it gets rid of those tab markers. One last thing I want to show you, if you make a mistake with a tab, let's say that you set a tab over at the one and a half inch mark on the ruler and you decided that that tab needs to actually be at the two inch mark. Well instead of doing extra steps, deleting the tab and then resetting it, you can just drag it over. But you have to be really careful when you're dragging it over because if you accidentally move the mouse up or down, it's going to erase the tab. So you have to be careful and really precise whenever you're dragging your tab over on the ruler to make sure that you drag it as straight as possible before you stop and release your mouse button.